has his own uh, upholstery carpeting uh, business, and and uh, but more than that, he's a prophet to this uh, uh, generation. Yes, I was raised him up to be a prophetic voice, and uh, you know his uh, his mission is to promote the kingdom of God and bring the saints back into their identity in Revelation, who they are in Christ. And, I don't know what all the Lord has laid on his heart, but I just sense in my spirit he is just I'm sure it's full of uh, what uh, God has given to him to share with us today. Brother, welcome. Thank you. What a powerful time of worship. Amen. Amen. It's interesting because I might say some things about worship here today. If that's all right with you. All right. Listen, I might say some things that might challenge you or say some things that you may have never heard before. But just because you haven't heard before doesn't mean it's not God. It means you just haven't heard it before. That's right. That's right. Amen? Amen. Amen? Because the job of the prophetic is to challenge the people of God. Today, we don't need any more messages. We don't need any more conferences. We don't need any more of all this stuff. Because we got problems. We still have problems, even after the preaching. Come on now. Even after the, the meetings, amen, we still have problems today. So we don't need another message. What we need is we need to hear from the heart of the Father. Yeah. Yeah. How many of you know that in Matthew 4, 4, it says, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of the Father. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There's three voices today in the earth. Actually, four. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen? There's the voice of the Father. <laughs> There's the voice of the Son, and there's the voice of the Spirit. And then there's man's voice. And so we don't want to hear from a man. We want to hear what God is saying in this hour. Amen. Somebody say amen. amen. I learned a long time ago that my life is not my own. And I said to the Lord, I don't want to speak unless, Lord God, you're speaking through me and speaking to the people. Because I don't have anything to give. You don't need Andrew Gonzalez to come and speak to you today. Amen. How many of you know that men have nothing? Paul said, it is the grace of God I am who I am today. Amen. It is only by the grace of God. See, we get starstruck today uh, with preachers and ministers because we put them on pedestals. And God never intended for that type of mentality to come into the church today. He never intended for ministers to be up here, but what he intended for was the speaker to be down here. That's why Jesus taught his disciples to wash each other's feet. Because the place, let me tell you what, feet, it's interesting because Emmanuel says, you know, where you go is purpose. And God, the Bible says the steps of a man are ordered by him. He orders your steps. He gives you purpose. He gives you direction. And so if you don't learn how to become a servant, you have no business ministering to the people of God. Yeah. Today we have such misconceptions of what ministry is or even what leadership really looks like. Yeah. I'm telling you what, if Jesus was here today, he would be overturning tables left and right because of wrong mindsets and wrong mentality of what leadership is. Yeah. Leadership should be on the floor. Leadership should be leading you. Leadership should be serving. But today, it's about people serving those and giving your money. It's about how much money you can give today. Yeah. And that's not, there's such a, a, a misrepresentation today of the power of God, the spirit of God, and what who God is and what he desires. Because what he desires is he, he desires for us to come into a place of worship and learn how to worship him. Right. Yeah. 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 
And when things are out of order, we can't really worship God. When the kingdom of God is not in its proper place in our life, then our worship is, is twisted. Hear what I'm going to say, because see, Jesus came to bring order back, amen, to the earth. He came to bring order back. He came to bring a, a, a right relationship back. He came to bring purpose back. He came to bring destiny back. And we've gotten so far from what Jesus, the patterned son, has come to, to show us what we need to do to get back on track. How many of you know the church has, got, has deterred and gotten so off track? Yeah. Because men have come in and have come in with their idea instead of going to the word of God. Let me tell you what. I'm not a preacher. I don't preach my opinion. I don't preach what I think. I don't preach. I stick to the script. Yeah. I stick to the word of God. Because the word of God, there's nothing that, the Bible says the earth, amen, was framed by the word of God. Our amen. life is framed by the word of God. Amen. Everything we do is framed by his word. Right. And if we can't believe that, then, then we got problems. And so just today, I, I want to, uh, let's turn to Acts. Is that all right? Yeah. Yeah. Let's turn to Acts, Acts chapter 15. I don't know how much time I have, but just, just go. give me a five-minute warning. Okay? Okay. But give me a five-minute warning. I can, and I can wrap it up. <laughs> Acts chapter 15. I, listen. God has completely revamped my whole mind, my thinking. Uh, my preaching, my teaching, uh, because of this one thing called the kingdom. Yeah. The kingdom, the revelation of the kingdom of God has totally changed my life. Yeah. It's changed my relationships. It's changed my marriage. Yeah. It's changed my relationship to my kids. Yeah. It's changed everything about me has completely changed when I begin to study what the kingdom of God is all about, and that Jesus came. Jesus' sole purpose was to restore the kingdom in its full totality. Amen. Amen. He came to restore the kingdom system. He came to restore order and bring order back to the earth, to the people of God. Yes. And so the purpose that Jesus came was to, was to bring his kingdom so that you can live in a system, in a place that's perfect. Right. Right. In Romans chapter 14, verse 17, it says the kingdom of God is not in meat and drink, but in righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. Matthew 6, 33 says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Now, it didn't say seek what you want to do. It says seek first the revelation of what the kingdom of God is all about. Seek first the kingdom and his righteousness. My God, I can preach on righteousness. Oh, yeah. But that's not my message right now. Yeah. What I want to do is lay a foundation that it's the kingdom system that was Jesus' priority to reestablish the kingdom because it was lost. Yeah. And so Jesus came to, 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 amen, restore the system of the kingdom. Amen. That's good. Yes. Amen. That's why his prayer, they said, teach us how to pray. And he said, pray this way. Our what? Father. Father who art in heaven. Now let's stop right there. It all goes back to the heavenly Father. Yes. He said, our Father who art in heaven, holy is your name. Yes. Your kingdom come. Amen. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So our prayer, number one, if our prayer isn't right and our relationship isn't right to the Heavenly Father, amen, everything else is going to be out of order. Because the purpose that Jesus came was to bring every single one of us back into a right relationship with the Father. Amen. The Father desires for you, amen, to, to be his children, to be his sons. How many of you have children in here today? How many of you have children that are moved out? Yep. 
How many of your children don't call you and don't talk to you? Don't you, they don't they don't reach out to you? Does it break your heart? Yeah. See, the father, his priority. The Bible says it this way: it says it's the father's good pleasure to give you his kingdom. And so in the prayer, it's our Father who art in heaven, holy is your name. So we must understand that we have to come to God, not out of fear, amen, of, of, of having a, a fear of him, but a reverential fear. Because we love him, because we reverence him. He wants us to come through a through relationship of reverence, not right. fear and terror, but reverence. Yeah, yeah. Because, see, when you, I reverence my marriage, so I don't break the vows of my marriage. Yeah. I don't go outside of my marriage. I'm not looking for another woman. I'm married to the one that God has given me. And you know what? There's a reverential fear that I have of breaking her heart, amen, and destroying what God has given me. Amen. Yeah. We need to have that kind of fear back to the Heavenly Father. Where we fear Him because we don't want to break His commandments. It's called love relationship. And so when Jesus began to teach them how to pray, He said, pray this after this manner. Our Father who art in heaven, holy is your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. How many of you know that Jesus did not come to fulfill his will? Amen. Jesus came to fulfill the will of his Father. Because he was sent from the Father. It says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him, amen, shall not perish. But for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son. His only begotten Son. His only begotten son. The word begot there is a powerful word. Yes, it is. Because it means, it's, it's the Greek word monogenous, and what it means is it means this. It means the only of its kind. Yeah. Yeah. Because see, we had to have the perfect come, and the perfect was the only of its kind. There wasn't anything like it, amen, because Adam fell. There wasn't anything like it. He had to send his son who was perfect into the earth. Because God loved the world so much, he gave the restoration, he gave the kingdom, he gave the system, he gave the solution, he gave the answer Amen. to what the world needs today. It doesn't need another, I'm telling you, it doesn't need another conference, it doesn't need another preaching. What it needs is it needs the kingdom, it needs a system, it needs a people who know how to operate and function in the system. Um, it's sad to say today that there are many believers in the body of Christ today that know nothing about the system. They don't know how it functions. They don't know how it works. They don't know how to implement the system. Jesus came with the understanding that he's restoring the system that his father gave him. And he didn't deviate. He didn't do his will. That's why he says in the garden, not my will, but your will be done, Father. Today we have two wills going on. We have the will of man and we have the will of the Father. And if you don't know the system, if you don't know the kingdom, if you don't know how it functions and the dynamics of the kingdom, you're going to be doing your own thing. This is why today we have such a high rate of suicide in pastors. Because what you do is you begin to fulfill your own mandate. Because you don't understand the mandate of the Father. And when you begin to do your own thing, you begin to get frustrated because nothing seems to work. It ain't going to work. God designed one system, one function, and one system that works. And when you begin to tap in to that system of resources, everything from heaven now is at your disposal. You don't have to fight the enemy. I hear many preaching. We have to fight the devil. We have to fight the enemy. We have to. Let me tell you what. I don't need to fight the enemy. He's been defeated two thousand years ago. All I have to do is be concentrated on what God is. Do you think the Father wants you to be stuck fighting the devil? No. Why would a holy God bring a solution and then say, "Well, you're going to have to fight the devil"? Once the devil was defeated at the cross. That's it. To tell us die. It is finished, Jesus said. The devil has no more power. He stripped him of his authority. 
He said, all power has been given to me to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. And Amen. now Jesus has given it to you. Yeah. Amen. Romans 16, 20 says, the God of peace will soon crush Satan under your feet. So wow. Satan is under your feet. That's his place. Why? Because we've been seated with him in heavenly places. And as long as I'm seated with Christ, as long as I'm seated by the right hand of the Father, the devil is under my feet. All I got to do is walk in purpose and destroy his plans. My God. See, people don't have people are not walking in purpose today. That's why the plans of the enemy are prevailing. The Bible says give no place to the devil. But when you give place to him, it's when you're not fulfilling purpose. Come on. Because righteousness means purpose. Righteousness means that Jesus has already done it for you. All you've got to do is follow the path of righteousness. And when you follow the path of righteousness, now you become an agent of change. And now you begin to destroy the works of the devil. For this purpose, the Son of Man came, that he might destroy the works of the devil. How many of you know that the devil's work was destroyed, that he has no more power over you, but he still has influence? And when you begin to fulfill purpose and you begin to walk out your purpose and destiny, guess what happens now? You begin to destroy the works of the devil. Am I making any sense to anybody? My gosh. Come on now. This none of this is in my notes. You know what I'm tired of today? Is I'm tired of purposeless preachers preaching today a sloppy message that's just that's just that's just trying to get you just to get you to make it. Yeah. Trying to get you to make it. Just make it through the day. Just survive. Just get by. When God says that you're more than a conqueror. They overcame through the blood of the Lamb and the word of their testimony. Amen. They overcame. In fact, that word testimony, if you study it out, it comes from the word testicles. And testicles means seed because testicles produce seed. And the word of God is seed. So what they really did is they overcame by the blood and the seed produce a testimony that they're able now to release the seed of God. The incorruptible seed, which is the word of God. The incorruptible seed, which was Jesus that came from the heavens to the earth. The incorruptible seed that filled, come on, the womb of Mary. That she now gave birth to that which was perfect. The seed was sown from heaven to the earth. And you know what God wants to do is he wants to reproduce what he did 2,000 years ago when he sent the perfect seed from heaven. Now, the Bible says in Romans chapter 8, verse 29, that Jesus is the firstborn of men, many brethren. You know what that means? It means that the seed now was planted in the ground and resurrected, and now it's beginning to produce a harvest, and all those that come into the kingdom are now of the perfect seed. You, every one of you, have a new DNA. Your DNA is from heaven. It's not corrupted anymore through the sin nature of man. You have a divine nature now. You have a divine influence. You have a divine power that God has given you. Too many people are the tail and not the head when the Bible says you're the head and not the tail. In other words, you're supposed to be advancing. There's supposed to be some victory. Cancer is just a name. But the name that's above every name. Hallelujah. Come on. Poverty is just a name. Sickness is just a name. Leukemia is just a name. Broken relationship is just a name. It's just a phrase. But when you understand your identity that you are born from above. That you carry something in you called the presence of Almighty God that begins to lead and guide you, and that begins to be your source yep. of living. Amen. Amen. My goodness. Oh. It's time for the church to become the church. I said it's time for the church to become the church. Right. 
we really don't have an understanding of what the word church means. No. Mm -hmm. That's right. We don't. No. We can break that down, but I'm not here to do that. Acts chapter 15, we're going to read in verse 17. You have to excuse me. I'm just recently got an over cold, so I'm surprised I'm shouting like I am. <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm so excited oh, about the Word of God. There's such power in the yeah. Word of God. Yes, yeah. And I know this one thing. The Lord told me a long time ago, He says, Preach my word. Amen. Bring revelation, bring understanding, preach my word. Because yeah. let me tell you what, my opinion is not going to change you. My preaching is not going to change you, but I know one thing that's going to, that, can, that, can, that has the power to change you, and that is the holy, incorruptible seed of God's word is the only thing. Because the Bible says in Romans chapter 12, verse 2, be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Ephesians 4.23 says renew the spirit of your mind. So it's only the word of God, amen, that can begin to reprogram your mind. It's only the word of God that begins to overwrite your old thinking and how you think. See, some of us have some religious thinking about God. And what God wants to do is he wants you to get the word being written, uh, amen, on the tablets of your mind. So that you can now begin to think like he thinks so that he can get rid of some religious activity that we've been doing because we've been serving God through religion. Yeah. And religion is the greatest strategy of the enemy today. Yeah. It's the greatest strategy of Satan is religion because Satan knows that if he can get you doing some religious activity, he'll get you going in circles around and around and around and you're not going to get anywhere. So we have to renew the spirit of our mind. We have to renew our mind to get the mind of the Father, to get the mind of God. The only way you're going to get the mind of God is you've got to get into the book. you got to get into the scriptures. Matthew chapter 5 verse 39, Jesus said, Search ye the scriptures, for in them you think and have eternal life. It's the word of God, amen, that changes the molecular structure of our minds. It begins to change things. It begins to change patterns of how you think. It begins to transform your mind. Because as a man thinks, so is he. As you think, so you become. And if you're thinking the word of God, now you've got the power to become, amen, what you're thinking or reading or studying. Through the help of Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit and the Word mixed together causes you to grow up. I heard it say, I'm going to try to remember it. I heard this preacher say this once. He said, if you're all Word, uh, you'll dry up. And if you're, all, no, 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 if you're all Word, you'll blow up. And if you're all Spirit, you'll dry up. But a mixture of the word and the spirit is going to cause you to grow up. I mean, know that there's some preachers that preach, and it's just they're always praying, 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 and they ain't got no word. Yeah. And then you have those preachers that always have the word, got the word, 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 but they ain't got no prayer life. So nothing, there's there's no transformation. Amen. There's no help. Because the Holy Spirit is your help. He's your helper. You know, the Bible says that the, it says, Jesus said, it's expedient that I go away. So I'm, because I'm going to send you the comforter. I'm going to send you the helper. Yeah. Right. But see, we always, we always take that out of, out of context. Because we always think that Holy Spirit is here to help us when we're in sorrow. He's there to comfort us when we're in sorrow. The Bible says that Holy Spirit is your comforter. He's there to bring comfort to your life so that you can be comfortable to begin to function in the kingdom. Yeah. Not when you're in sorrow. Oh, he'll help you when you're in sorrow. Yeah. But he wants to make you comfortable in this life. Oh. Called the kingdom. Oh. When you study that word comfort, it's the word intercession. It is. So he's your intercession. The problem is, my brother, is that we, 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 we don't come to the place of intercession. Like the Father is is oh, yeah. calling us into yep. our Father who art in heaven. See, the prayer starts with intercession 
that goes to the Heavenly Father. Man, I don't even know if I should get into what I got here. <laughs> My God. I'm just going to go with what the Lord is. Amen. Are you receiving this here? Yes. Two years ago, I was with Apostle Ron with uh, my brother here. It's uh, Victor. He's a part of Apostle, Apostle Ron's ministry. And uh, was it two or three years ago? I can't remember. Uh, we, we, we go to the Philippines and we do conferences throughout the Philippines. We're teaching them uh, in their identity. We're teaching them the kingdom. But it's, it's a conference for leaders. So we want to we hit the leaders. We want to pour into the leaders of the pastors and pour into them. And the idea is that if we, can, if we can get the revelation of the kingdom in them, then they'll begin to expand. And that's exactly what's happening. Pastor Lino, who's one of the uh, apostles that we ordained in, in that office, he now is exploding and taking off everywhere. And he's reproducing after his own kind. It's powerful. It's powerful what's taking place in the Philippines. And so three years ago, I had gone with him and I prepared. Because let me tell you what. I preached probably over 25 times in the Philippines. Over 25 times. So I knew uh, that I was going to need to preach, and so I prepared all these messages. And in the first conference, we did five conferences that year. The first conference, I the first time I get up, the Lord said, "Put away your notes." I said, "What?" He said, "Put away your notes." I said, "For how long?" <laughs> and he said, "I don't want you to look at your notes for the rest of the conference." I said, "Lord." Are you sure that's you? <laughs> I'm in the police. <laughs> and so I put away my notes. And from that day forward, I put away my notes. I'm just studying the word. I'm just seeking the Lord. I'm just digging into the revelation. Very rarely. The only time I'll put notes together if I'm teaching a class, because I teach at the ministry I'm at, I teach every Thursday night. Right now we're on break, but I teach every Thursday night. It's a structured thing. And so when I have a structured thing, then I put together notes and stuff. But when I go preaching and stuff, I don't I don't really put together notes. I don't even have notes other than a few things that I wrote down this morning while I was sitting down. And so, because the word is always work. And let me tell you something. This is the place that God wants to get every single one of us into. Come on. Yeah, Where the word of God is so engrafted. The Bible says it is the engrafted word. Amen. That's able to save your soul. How many of you know that your spirit man is now saved? When you got born again. Amen. The Bible says that you're born. The word again is the word above. So the Bible says when you got born again, you got you are now born from above. Amen. You are born from a whole different system. Do you know that the game has changed completely in your favor? Yeah. Because sure. now you're from you're born from above. You're born. You're, you've, you've now been you now have come from a place of the heaven. And I find it no coincidence that we have clouds here in the sky. Yeah. 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 Well, the Bible says that you're born from above. So if you're born from above, that means you're born from a place called heaven. And if you're born from a place called heaven, how many of you know that God, amen, is perfect in all his power, in all his splendor, in all his glory? And what he did is he said, I'm going to give that to you, even though I know that you have sin. The blood of Jesus has completely washed your sin away. So let me tell you what, the blood has covered you. Amen. Somebody had a jacket. Give me a jacket. You see this? I'm going to put this right here. This bag right here. Let me show you what it is. How many of you know that you have the flesh? And the flesh you're always going to have with you. And the flesh you're always going to have to crucify. That's just the part of you that's totally against God. Amen? Amen. The mind we have to renew every single day, the Bible says. We have to renew the mind. So the, the outward man perishes, the inward man is renewed day by day. The inward man is the soul man. It's your mind, your will, and your emotions have to be renewed and have to be regenerated. But when you got born again, you were born from above. 
Amen. Your Amen. spirit man is now awakened and comes to life. Lord. Because your spirit man was asleep in sin. That's why the Bible says awake to righteousness. Come on, somebody. Yeah. When you got born again, the spirit man inside of you is now awakened. Amen. Yeah. And so the reason Jesus had to come and die, amen, and spill his blood, because the Bible says the life of the body is in the blood. How do you know that it's the blood that gives life? It's the blood that changes you, amen, from a sin nature of Adam to the divine nature, amen, of your heavenly father. Amen. So what the blood did, Jesus came and brought the blood, and what he did with the blood is he said, I'm going to cover you now. Right. So now, when the Father sees you, he doesn't see a man of sin. He sees the blood. He sees the blood. I said he sees the blood. So when he sees you, he doesn't see a failure. He doesn't see somebody that's made mistakes. He doesn't see somebody that has no identity and no purpose. He sees the blood. Amen. And when he sees the blood, he now has empowered you. Right. Right. Come on. It is now your responsibility, amen, to now change the molecular structure of your mind. Called your mind, will, and emotions. See, some, many of us are led by our emotions, and we do everything emotionally based, and it drives our will. Come on, brother. And the two, amen, fight each other. But most importantly, it fights God. Yeah. about 